Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is 20th lecture of this graph theory series part 1. In this lecture, we are going to study about BFS on 2D grid. We will be also implementing the algorithm that we will be studying in this lecture. So, what are the lecture goals? Of course, the lecture goals are to understand BFS on 2D grid uh, with some examples, with the help of some examples. And then, of course, we'll be uh, looking at the similarities between BFS on a graph and BFS on 2D grid. This is same as what we did in the previous lecture when we have studied, where we have studied DFS on 2D grid. There also we have seen that there are some uh, similarities. In fact, there are many similarities between DF, uh, uh, when we apply DFS on 2D grid and when we apply DFS on graph. Same way, there are many similarities when we apply BFS on graph and BFS on 2D grid. So we'll be studying those as well. And of course, finally, we'll be implementing the algorithm that we just studied. So if I show you the example, uh, suppose this is the example 2D grid and we have to apply BFS on this grid where this cell is actually your starting point. And we are assuming that edges, common edges are sides. So from here you can move here from here you can move here but from here you cannot move here because the these two cells do not have any common edge now one one more thing if you haven't following this dfs uh, graph algorithms on grid uh, part from starting uh, from, from starting or from beginning i would highly advise you to go and watch those lectures first where we have introduced bfs dfs and other algorithms of uh, of graph theory on grid so i highly advise you to watch the introduction lecture first because uh, there are many there are many things that i have explained there and i cannot repeat those things here so make sure you have watched those lecture first now if you have to apply bfs from here assuming only you can move from a cell to only up down left and right that means you can move from a cell to any other cell which is having a common edge then the BFS result would look something like this. This is the source uh, source cell. So distance of this or uh, this cell would be zero, right? From all these cells can be reached in one step. That is why all of these cells are at distance one. These are at distance two because for, to reach from this cell to this, either you can go this way or this way. Similarly, these two are at three distance because either you would go this way or this way or this way. Any way you take from here to here will take three unit of time, three unit of step, uh, steps minimum. So that is why the distance of these cells from source is actually three. If I show you another example where now common sides as well as common corners are considered to be edges. That means from the from this cell you can move to up, down, left and right as well as to these corner cells. From here you can move here now. So basically from here you can move in all eight directions. So if you apply BFS considering this cell as your source uh, source cell then the BFS result look something like this this is at the distance 0 this cell is at distance 0 from source cell of course these all are at distance 1 because you can reach any cell any cell out of these in one unit of uh, step for, exa for example from here you can reach here by simply you can move from here to here because now you can consider these two cell adjacent because now we are considering corners as uh, corner cells as adjacent cell as well you can reach this cell in two steps or this cell in two step you can do you can go from here to here and then here so this is what bfs result would look like if we consider all common edges and as well as uh, common corners as edges then this would be the bfs result the question is how we will apply bfs on grid but before that let's see how we apply bfs on simple graph or any graph to do that we have certain source vertex from where we start and what we do we create a queue 
and we insert that source vertex in that queue and then we initialize the distance of the source vertex, uh, vertex to be zero and also mark the source vertex to be visited one means visited zero means unvisited so basically we have inserted we are assuming this to be source versus uh, source vertex so what we have done we have inserted this into the queue mark it distance from source to be zero and also mark it as visited after that while queue is not empty uh, this whole algorithm i have already explained how bfs is applied on graph on graph theory series part one uh, course as well so if you have no idea how bfs works so first i would advise you to go watch those lectures so after doing that we run a while loop while uh, there is at least one uh, one node in the queue we take out the front front node and we also pop out that after that for each node which is adjacent to current node we'll see whether that node is visited or not if that is not visited we would insert that node into the queue we will also mark that node as visited and also initialize the distance of that node to be distance of current node plus one so basically distance of these two node would be distance of this node plus one which means one so this uh, distance of this and this node would be one similarly distance of these two would be two so this is how normal bfs work Let's see how BFS on grid works. This is the code for BFS on 2D grid and this is of course the code on graph. Now you see, uh, as explained in the introductory lecture, uh, as there are nodes in the graph, there are cells in the grid, right? So here we, we would have X and Y because now we have, we need to have the coordinate, uh, the sorry the coordinate of the source cell so source x and source y as are the uh, coordinate of your source cell after that you would insert in q those source coordinate because now here while we are working on graph uh, each node is uh, designated or assigned a single integer that defines that node like node 1 2 3 or 4 but here a cell is uniquely identified by number or uh, row and color column number of that cell and these are uh, this represents the row number this represents the column number that is why we cannot have only one but we would have two arguments so we would insert that cell into the uh, into q we would mark it as visited and also initialize its distance now see here q would contain a pair instead of a single integer this this q would now store pairs and this way you can make pair in c plus plus just put them into uh, in curly braces now these three steps are similar to what uh, there are three steps in uh, in bfs on graph now again same thing will run while there exists at least uh, at least one cell in the queue after that you take out the current node but here you would take out the current cell which is represented by x and y coordinate so we would take out x and y separately so q dot front actually represents the pair but i only want the x so i would access the first and i would access the second for y and now of course we would remove that cell from the queue after that here we uh, access the adjacency list of the current node to see if there are any node which are adjacent to current node which are not visited right this is what we are checking and then we are performing these three steps but here we already know for for a uh, for a cell there are either four adjacent cells or eight adjacent cells depending upon whether we are considering only the common edges or corners as well so there can be four to eight different adjacent cells depending upon that you would have either eight or four different directions so here i'm considering only four different direction here this i have already explained what is is valid function you would see and it valid from uh, is valid function dx and dy i have already explained in the lecture where i have uh, taught dfs on 2d grid so that is why i'm saying if you are not following this uh, graph algorithm on grid from beginning just go and start from the beginning because there are many things i'll be referring uh, i'll be referring from those lectures so uh, this is valid is check uh, will check whether the new cell you want to step on is actually valid or not 
this would basically check whether the new cell you want to step on is actually visited or not and also that cell exists or not for example for current cell you can try to go up but what happens when you are on the uh, on the first row when you are on any cell on the first row the the cell above that the direction up doesn't exist that is why this valid function will take care of everything so if the new cell you want to step on which is current x plus dx of i current y plus dy of i dx and dy array i have already explained in that lecture where i have explained uh, dfs on two digits so go check out that, those lectures if you have no idea about this so this would be the coordinate of new cells you want new cell you want to step on so this would check whether that cell exists or not and also if that cell is visited or not if the uh, if this function returns true that means this is a valid cell so you can move on to that in that case what we would do we would simply calculate the x and y coordinates of the new cell and simply assign the distance of new cell to be distance of current cell plus one we will mark that the uh, we will uh, we'll mark the new cell to be visited and also we will push the new cell coordinates into the queue and this is how BFS on 2 degree works this is exactly the same as BFS on normal graph so I don't think if you have studied uh, normal BFS BFS on normal graph you don't think uh, I don't think you will find this algorithm the new algorithm algorithm even a little bit difficult so if I show you the code and a working example this is the code this is the is valid function that checks whether the coordinate of new cells are correct or not before that this is a distance array which will store the distance of every single cell after BFS this is to take care of whether the current cell is visited or not and these are the uh, dimensions or dimensions of the grid so if x is less than 1 or x is greater than n or y is less than n or y is greater than m basically this is checking whether the current cell is inside the grid or not if you are going outside we would uh, if any of the condition is true and if any of the four condition is true that means you are going outside that means we would return false if the uh, if that doesn't happen that means the cell you want to go is actually a visit uh, a valid cell which is completely inside your grid in that case we would see whether the cell is actually visited or not if this is already visited we would return false because we can't visit a uh, an already visited cell right that that is why in that case we would return false if none of these two conditions are true that means the cell you want to visit is actually unvisited and exists inside the grid so that is why we would return true this is the direction uh, array I have defined dx and dy these two combined will form up right down and left again this I have already explained in the slide so the same algorithm just this is what I have added extra this is to print the distance array so how algorithm works simply we would read n and m which is dimension of the grid and after that we would read x and y which is source uh, source cell for BFS and finally after performing BFS we are printing the distance array so let me show you if suppose we have 4 cross 4 array and the source cell is 1 1 so this is your distance array so source is at distance from itself these two cells are at distance 1 these are at distance 2 these are 3 4 and 5 and 6 so now let's take bigger example say 9 cross 9 and I'll be starting from 5 cross 5 so you see this will be your starting point and this is what your distance array would look like so this is how you apply BFS on 2D grid uh, in the next lecture we'll be taking some of the interesting examples and solve some of the problems using the same algorithm so that you feel confident uh, about implementation of this algorithm so this was all for this lecture if you have any doubt or query ask on the on the article that I've created for this course on discuss.codeshape.com. I'll be putting the link to the uh, to the article in the description of this video. So if you have any doubts, you can ask there. So this was all for this lecture. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.